I think it is probably uh, easy to say that it's rare that somebody of the stature of a Brigitte Gabriel comes to a city the size of Twin Falls, but she is coming here this coming Thursday. She's got an appearance, and she's going to be talking, I think, a great deal about her own experience, which she has been doing around the world now for many, many years. Uh, if you don't know her backstory, she was a little girl growing up in Beirut, Lebanon, when the Civil War broke out there in the mid-1970s, and after that, being a Christian became... Uh, really just a, a, you were marked for death. And her family ended up having to live in the rubble for a time until they could flee and get out of the city and leave the country. And her experience is that when you suddenly have a large influx of a Muslim population, there's a tipping point eventually, I think you could say, my own interpretation of that, but a tipping point that is developed. And that tipping point eventually means that the newcomers become very, very aggressive in their views and become aggressive with their neighbors. It is coming up on eight minutes after nine o'clock. It is 65. I have a guest in studio with us who's going to be discussing this in this segment of the program, talking a little bit about her appearance. His name is Hilbert Nelson. First of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. I was going to say, uh, there's an, some excitement in all of this because I know when she came here last year to the, uh, I guess she was in Canyon County. When she mm -hmm. came here last year, we had her on the air and of course she's a live wire as far as that goes, full of energy. But she attracted, I think, 1,100 people to her event without a lot of pre-publicity because of security concerns. Uh, we're expecting, I assume, a large turnout here. Uh, a little details on this. So it's coming up Thursday night, right? How do yep. people get there if they intend to go? Okay. It's going to be at the Roper Auditorium at 7 p.m. Tickets are free. You can call 544-0498 about getting free tickets at the door or you can order free tickets by going to Eventbrite. And Eventbrite is spelled E-V-E-N-T, Bright, B-R-I-T-E dot com, and simply type in Brigitte Gabriel Presentation, and you'll be able to download free tickets. So that's how you can come. I think the doors will be open about 6.30 or so, and she'll be speaking. We actually have two events, Bill. The following one is on Friday, at the city park in Twin Falls, and it is from 5 to 8 p.m. It is a picnic involving food, music, speakers from the local chapters of Act for America, of which Brigitte Gabriel is the founder, the John Birch Society, and Dally Post Tactical out of Pocatello. And it's your opportunity to answer the question after you listen to this very dynamic speaker, what can I do locally to make a difference? about making sure our country remains safe and the Constitution remains the law of our land. So you'll have an opportunity to meet local folks. It's time for family, some music, for fun, networking. There'll be a, uh, lots of presentations and an opportunity to really hear more about what's going on locally. I, I think that we could say, and I, I've got a couple of clippings here because for a time, I mean, we've had a refugee program here for, I guess, 20 years. Yeah. And it's been a very quiet sort of refugee program. But after the the crumbling of Syria and other parts of the Middle East and Africa that we've seen going on where these refugees are coming from. Again, we go back to the notion that we don't know who all of these people are who are coming here. And I assume she is going to tailor her message a great deal to local concerns. I mean, she can share her own experience, but she can likely, you know, talk to us about what can happen to your own community, right? That's right, because Brigitte Gabriel is the founder of Act for America, and they are one of the leading national experts as she is one of the leading national experts in the world providing information on the rise of Islamic terrorism. She lectures nationally and internationally about security issues, uh, current affairs. Her expertise is sought by business leaders. She's addressed the United Nations about this, the Australian Prime Minister, the Pentagon, Joint Forces Staff College, the U.S. Operations Command. She's written two books on this subject, one of her own experience that you talked about, in Lebanon called Because They Hate, which is the answer her father gave her when she was a little girl about why are the Muslims doing this? And that was his answer. Uh, we see an article in Breitbart about how um, this, uh, the Islamic State says this is a religious war and we hate you. And that's not something I'm quoting. That's something that they're quoting. So we see this. Uh, she's able to speak locally to issues nationally. She's very excited that Act for America local chapter is working with the John Birch Society and Dally Post Tactical. We are a unique group, and we're showing uh, that we have local, average, everyday, non-fringe group people coming together, sharing these local concerns, 
about maintaining the constitution of our land and wanting to work together to make sure that happens. No, see, you, you, you said something that you said, non-fringe groups, because there are people, obviously, who, who may have their own agendas and their opposition, but I think that what gets ignored in media and by some people in government is there are legitimate concerns from regular, I mean, I, what I would describe as normal people in all of this, and, and you know, unfortunately, they try to tire everybody as being, you know, a bigot, mm-hmm. and it, it, it gets very frustrating, I'm sure, for a lot of people who are active in this. When you go to our website, should I give that out now? Yeah. Okay, so write this down, uh, listeners. It's www.wethepeoplemv, as in Magic Valley, dot w-i-x dot com, and then forward slash home, H-O-M-E. It were more than just a website about uh, We the People Magic Valley. You will find a calendar of events. You'll also find a blog. And you'll also find news that the Times News has either chosen not to report or spins to their liking. Um, a lot of this came to the forefront with the June 2nd sexual assault on the five-year-old girl at Fawnbrook Apartments that eventually got national attention, for which the Times News to this day really hasn't done uh, investigative journalism on the subject. But we did, and we are going to be doing more of news about local concerns. So again, this is a place for us to tell this side of the story that doesn't get told. If you can grab the headsets, um, there should be a pair there. We've got a telephone caller, I believe, and uh, might have a question or a comment. It's 913. Hilbert Nelson is our guest this morning, and he's uh, discussing the upcoming visit by Brigitte Gabriel at 66. Bill Colley with you as well on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And caller, you're on the air. Yeah, good morning. Uh, about a week ago, uh, a friend of mine that was an Iraq Afghanistan uh, veteran, and one of the, uh, um, oh, what do you call those people, um, refugees had gone into a gas station and started throwing things off the shelf and was groping women, and he got in a fight with this guy. He uh, ended up stabbing uh, somebody. The cops came, arrested him, um, and he's in jail right now on a $100 million bond. So I don't know who this guy is, but, uh, I mean, Osama bin Laden was uh, $25 million. This guy's on a $100 million bond, so I'd like to know who this guy is. Thank you. That's a new one to me. That's a new one to me, too, but it points to uh, a lot of things that we're seeing. I just pointed or point, printed out on the Internet uh, all of the uh, deaths that have occurred since 9-11. Uh, the most recent, of course, was the one in Orlando with 49 people. But if you look that up on the Internet, as I have, on um, it's called uh, um, Islamic Terror on American Soil, What Makes Islam So Different, you will find a list of all of these uh, assaults and deaths that have occurred to people here in the United States of America, the ones that you don't hear about, involving assaults on homosexuals, uh, a recruiting center in the United States for the paramilitary suicide attacks, the gay nightclub, uh, someone that dared to not, uh, to was not hearing to Islamic practices, so for not being Islamic enough, or converting a woman to Christianity, or just being very religious or feeling like they're on a mission from Allah. So what we're seeing now is the stuff that's going on in Germany and France on a almost daily basis. Six months ago, that might have been every three months. Now it's daily. So it's coming here and is here. Here's the, here's what concerns me, because i got a couple of clippings here. Uh, this one from WorldNet Daily. Michael Savage apparently posted to Facebook a story about uh, a Syrian refugee hacking to death a pregnant woman in Germany Facebook then suspended his account. And even though he's a well-known figure, they suspended his account at Facebook. Number two, the Washington Times says Department of Homeland Security has decided to grant temporary amnesty to 8,000 Syrians living in the U.S. right now, many of whom may have come here illegally. And Hillary Clinton, of course, wants to bring in one million more if she's elected president. Mm-hmm. So are we, uh, are, are we ignoring the obvious uh, in order to be politically correct? We're doing more than that. Uh, Germany's doing more than that. They are arresting people for posting the very kinds of things you and I are talking about right now. In fact, if we were doing this in Germany, we would be shut down by the German government. Not only are they underreporting and denying what happened in Cologne, Germany, in front of their nation's cathedral on New Year's Day, 
uh, they are now rounding up people for hate speech, never mind that what Islamic terrorism calls us as infidels and, and the rest is hate speech. They are, the German government has decided that they are for the terrorists and against their own people in this regard. And so what you and I are doing right now may very well one day be considered hate speech. You have people, I think, I won't say all of them, but you have a handful, some in, in our local governments, who I think if they could do that, they would. Uh, number, uh, number two point to all of this is uh, why is it, that you think that we've got people in local government who are trying to, because I know they don't have a lot of control over this program, but why are they deflecting so much of the criticism? I think Brigitte Gabriel said it best when we have it on our flyer. It is time we take political correctness and throw it in the garbage where it belongs. So that's what you're hearing. You're hearing a political correct narrative that the immigration policy as dictated by the UN and implemented through refugee centers right on down to the one here at CSI. Everything's awesome, everything's fine, there's nothing to worry about, and if you criticize it, you are Islamophobic, you are xenophobic, you're a hater. That's that's the gist of it right there. And we have a, we have a candidate running for a state legislative seat who was quoted in the newspaper earlier this year as saying, we aren't that kind of people. In other words, that, you know, we, she's speaking for everybody that, you know, that we're going to open the doors and do all of this. It seems to me that a lot of them are getting a lot of pressure out of patting themselves on their backs for their own good deeds, but they're not really thinking about their neighbors because, frankly, they don't have to live at Fawnbrook Apartment. They live in a nice gated community. That's right. And so it's easy to, um, you know, be able to tell people what you should be doing, how you should be thinking while you're saying it from behind your bodyguards with your guns and behind your walls like Paul Ryan does when he criticizes uh, everyone else for uh, wanting a border on our country. Again, it's just political correctness. It's a globalized effort. We don't see it just here in the United States, but we see that narrative being played out in Great Britain, France, and Germany, uh, saying that, that all these policies will bring in a multicultural global, global utopia. But what do we see? And again, it's 7 p.m. this Thursday night, mm -hmm. Roper Auditorium. Yes. And for newcomers to the area, where is that located? Okay, that is Roper Auditorium is in Twin Falls, Idaho. And it's right next door to the Twin Falls High School on Filer and Maurice. Uh, again, you can get your tickets by uh, going to Eventbrite, www.eventbrite, and bright is spelled B-R-I-T-E dot com. Search the Gabriel... Uh, Brigitte Gabriel presentation, or you can call 544-0498 and then come to our picnic for a meet and greet. Hilmer Nelson, I want to thank you for coming by today. Thank you. I hope you rival the turnout they had in uh, Caldwell or maybe even larger. I hope all your listeners come and help us do that. All right. All Have right. a good day and good luck with the program. Thank it's you. It's coming up on 920. Bill Colley with you at Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. 65 right now. We've got plenty more coming up. In fact, I've got to share with you some government programs that are costing you billions. Just as a follow-up to uh, Hilbert Nelson's uh, presentation here in the last few minutes, I have an email from someone in the listening audience who is sharing some disappointment. Not, not anger, but just disappointment because they went to a local church to see if they could pass out flyers about Brigitte Gabriel's visit because... Gabriel being a Christian speaker, they thought it might be interest uh, of interest to people at the church that this is taking place. And well, they were told, well, you can't do it in the church, but that's okay. They said, we'll we'll do it outside. And they put flyers underneath windshield wipers. Apparently, after they left, somebody went out and removed all the flyers. And they're pointing out that you know the congregants can make up their own minds about whether they'd like to go or not. And they said they don't feel it was solicitation. It's just informational that this is taking place. And they'd like to get the word out to as many people as possible. Uh, we should point out that we've had similar speakers come to Twin Falls in the past. Uh, Pastor Sharam uh, Hadian uh, was here in the area a couple of times uh, in the last year. And uh, he has actually had churches back out of hosting him after inviting him, then back out because somebody got a little political pressure applied and then said, well, gee willikers, no, I, I, I guess my sanctuary is going to be busy that night. It's going to be flooded. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, bed bugs. Yeah, 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 you can't come. But we do want to give credit to the people who do allow their sanctuaries to be open because, you know, you've got a lot of space. And so you can bring people in. 
Uh, if you've got a lot of space, you can bring people in and let them hear that message, which is an important message uh, that people, you know, even if you don't agree with it, why do you want to have other people not hear it? I mean, it, it would be like the, the rest of us shutting down liberal speech because it's wrong. For, we would say it's wrong for people to hear that. And in the last time Hadian was here, one of the last times, at least we had a couple of people who went out on their own to, to hear it because they thought, you know, you've got to be informed. Maybe they don't agree, but they, you've got to be informed. One of them was at Lee Hyder, and the other was Steve Millington. And they went to hear him speak because they thought, okay, this is an important event in our community, and we, we, we should probably hear it. And yet you did not see a lot of other people. I think Tom Carter came to one of the presentations too. But overall, you're, you're not – you're not seeing these big turnouts from the political class. Let me again reiterate this. That, you're, you're worried that somebody will write a newspaper editorial and say, oh, you're not being politically correct. Who the heck reads those things? Other than you politicians. So, uh, you know, don't worry about it. It has no bearing on election day, okay? It's all about, and you know, even if they give you a hard time about it, just say, I'm trying to be as well informed as I can. So I can make a decision later on on an informed basis. Nothing wrong with that. 926, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com at 66. I do want to remind people close to 100 today. Maybe we will break 100 in some areas of the Magic Valley. But then things start a good cool down for a, for a good stretch of our weather over the next several days. And that's a reminder that winter may still be a bit, away, a bit of the way down the road. But you got to recall this. When you actually get to that first cold night and you haven't had the furnace on for you know months on end, and you go flip that switch, and if it doesn't come on. So you've got to test it out early and find out that it's working well in advance of cold weather. So you got to call the pros at Ramsey Heating and Electric. The team at Ramsey's are going to make sure it's done right the first time. Problem-free, cozy winners are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The telephone number is 678-0459. That's Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they sell warm winters and cool summers. Caller joining us. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air on KLIX. Hey, sorry, Bill, to ask this question, but when was that uh, uh, Bridget going to be at the city park? I didn't catch that. Well, she's going to be here Thursday at Roper Auditorium. Right. City Park is a picnic the following night. I don't know that she's going to be able. Her staff was telling me uh, this morning I came in, I had an email that she is traveling all week long. So I don't know how much time she's going to be able to, to devote to Twin Falls aside from the speech. Okay, okay. Thank you. I'm going to be at the speech. So I just I caught that about the park. And so I'd like, like to go to that too. All right. Thank you, sir. Hey, thank you for the telephone call. And you're next. You're on the air on KLIX. Uh, good morning. Uh, regardless of what everyone says, the reason those flyers can't be handed out in a church is because of five, they'll lose the 501c3. That's how the government controls the preachers to preach all these false doctrines. Also, the uh, everybody's complaining about Hillary getting away with the murders of Benghazi. How can you expect to get justice for those people thousands of miles away when we can't even get justice for an innocent rancher that was murdered here locally? Well, again, you weren't there when he was killed, so you don't neither know if it was murder you. or not. Neither were you. And not no, neither was I, but, you know, witness testimony from family members conflicts. You can't go convict somebody on your heart. You've got to actually have some evidence. Thanks for the call, though. He is right, though, about distributing the literature. In 1954, the then leader of the U.S. Senate, Lyndon Baines Johnson, pushed through a law, and it got signed into law, by, unfortunately, by, uh, by President Eisenhower, but it limited the political speech at churches around the country. Donald Trump, by the way, has said he will lift that. He will work to eliminate that law, allowing preachers to once again speak politically. It's funny because I think imams do it, but no one's bothering to watch them, right? And if you did go after them, you'd only make them mad, so we wouldn't want to do that. It's 67. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. And by the way, about the rancher. Oh, murdered, innocent rancher. If he was drunked up like somebody told me yesterday and he was, you know, waving that rifle around and shooting it off in the direction of people, it might have actually caused a problem. But the attorney general can't go put people on trial because he's not named Marilyn Mosby with a lack of evidence. Thank you.